Howdy Connection Group leaders, happy Thursday and happy Thanksgiving. I am broadcasting today from my dad's office in Girard, Kansas. I don't know if you know this or not, my dad's a pastor. Uh, it's kind of cool, my dad actually pastors the church he grew up in. He's my, my grandmother's pastor, uh, which is kind of sweet. So uh, we've been doing Thanksgiving up here with the family. We ate lots, just finished watching the Cowboys. That was sad, but it was good to be together. And uh, now I'm excited to be talking to you. I truly hope that you've had an excellent Thanksgiving day and, and week. I hope you keep celebrating through the weekend. Pray for us. We're going to be uh, traveling home tomorrow. I'm uh, excited to get back into Arlington. But I'm also excited about Sunday because we get to talk about one of the truly greatest, um, most theologically profound passages of Scripture in the entire Bible. Um, you now we we said last week, I mean, Romans is just so so dense and so full of of beauty and glory and and um, gosh, deep truths and things that kind of make you scratch your head. Uh, you can spend a lot of time studying Romans, and I think we should. Uh, but chapter chapter five is just so helpful to answer a lot of of uh, really big questions and maybe even things you might be a little bit fuzzy on, and ultimately to encourage your heart. Um, we're going to look at the whole chapter on Sunday, and let me just say this up front, because the lesson does a beautiful job of just uh, preaching what I would say, preaching through it systematically, verse by verse, helping, it, it's honestly, it's how I would teach it just directly, uh, just here's what these verses mean, here's what these verses mean, here's how these verses connect to the previous chapter, or what's coming up. It's so, so good. So again, if you just follow the lesson plan, you're going to be in good shape. Uh, but I do think it's worth pointing out, I think the most important verses of this chapter are the first five, and I want to walk you through why. Uh, so it starts off so well, right? Verse one, therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we're justified by faith. God declared us not guilty. By the way, there's lots of fun theological words that are so worth, regardless of what age group you're teaching, it's so worth your time to go over some of these theological words. And again, that's that's in your material. Justification, being declared not guilty, definitely worth students' time to know that. We've been justified by faith through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have a relationship with him. Through him, we've obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of glory. So we're rejoicing in our salvation. We're rejoicing in God. Yes, this makes sense. Yes, this is precious. Verse 3, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. Wait, I'm um, um, well, sorry, what? right break. I'm, I'm rejoicing in my salvation. I'm rejoicing in God's goodness. And now I'm rejoicing in my sufferings. What? Hang on a second. Yeah, we're rejoicing in our sufferings. Why? Thankfully, he answers us. He gives us lots of answers here, right? We rejoice in our sufferings because suffering produces endurance and, and endurance produces hope. I'm sorry, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. Why does this matter? It matters for a thousand reasons, but I really think the biggest deal is this, guys. The world needs hope. The world is longing for hope. And there's really only one place that hope can be found, and we have the amazing opportunity to share the hope of God through these theological truths that come from chapter 5. But watch this, and this is why I think it's the most important. The world does not care about our deep theological answers until they discover whether or not this faith thing is real for us. And where they find out this faith is real for us is when they see us endure suffering, just like they have to endure suffering, but they see us endure it differently. We rejoice in our suffering. Why? Because our hope is based in Jesus, because we are uh, relating to Christ. He suffered, so do we. And we take, take encouragement from that. We have different character than the world has. Characters where we prove that this Jesus thing is real. And when they see that this Jesus thing is real, then suddenly they're willing to listen to us. And again, they certainly want hope. And they want to know the answers that we have, but they will not listen until they know whether or not it's real. That's why these five five verses, really three, four, and five, are maybe the most important. And this is why we need God to continue to shape us to look more like him so that the world is ready to hear from us why we have our hope 
in Jesus and why we take great joy in the fact that Jesus justified us and why we're overwhelmed by the fact that his salvation is good for everybody, us and the people that don't, don't know it yet. So spend some time camping out there this week. So, so good. Guys, we love you. I know we say this a lot. Certainly on this day, though, we want you to know, all you Connection Group leaders, we are so incredibly thankful for you. It is amazing what you do week in and week out, and not just on Sundays. So many of you, I know for a fact, are, are contacting your group members and just pastoring people well, and we're grateful for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for serving our church family and for serving our Lord and for being co-laborers with us on staff. We're grateful. Guys, again, we love you. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon. Bye.